Working healthy is win-win. Sadly, many people end up working in awkward postures for long hours at a time. They end up hunched over their keyboard or perched at the edge of their chair with no back support. or with incredible extended right arm posture and severe wrist extension as they use their mouse. Is it really any wonder people have discomfort? Ergonomics is the study of how people work and how to make the work environment more efficient and safe. This film is focused on the office and computer user. Ergonomics can help people improve their workflow, decrease the chances of getting injured, and help employees to have more energy both at work and at home after they finish their workday. By watching this film or the individual segments that pertain to your risk factors, you will be able to avoid computer-related discomfort and improve your workflow. I am a nurse ergonomist with over 15 years of experience who would like to show you what ergonomics can do for you and teach you how to adjust your equipment and improve your work habits. We will begin by looking at one of the most important pieces of equipment you have, your chair. Many people I see have not adjusted their chair well. They often have the armrests too tall and the backrests adjusted uncomfortably. When we discuss the chair features, they often confess that they only adjust the height mechanism. Having the chair adjusted for improved overall fit will increase your comfort level and provide you with greater overall support. Women, and also some men, may spend the majority of their time sitting in an upright posture with no back support. This is fine for part of the day, especially if the person is able to maintain upright spine posture, but is not recommended for the entire day. It is recommended that a computer user receive back support while working. Without good back support, people are more likely to end up slouched at their computer. Adjust your backrest throughout your workday so that you maintain good back support. A footrest can help provide leg and additional back support. One of the most frequent chair adjustments I do for people is to flatten the seat pan so they are no longer feeling like they are sliding out of their chair. Another one is just locking the full tilt feature so that the backrest is stable and the chair does not rock backwards. If your armrests are too tall, this can raise your shoulders and put pressure on nerves in your elbow. Generally, the keyboard tray height should allow for an arm angle of 110 degrees or an open arm angle so that your wrists are positioned slightly lower to the floor than your elbow height. This increases circulation and helps to keep your hands warm and shoulders relaxed. You should avoid heavy resting of your wrists on the wrist rest while you type. A keyboard tray may not work well for you if you are not a touch typist. If you need to look at the keyboard frequently, then having it on a tray may aggravate your neck while looking up and down from the keyboard to the monitor. If it is possible to work with the keyboard on the primary work surface, this can be ideal since you can push the keyboard farther away from you and avoid flexing your neck frequently. It is also recommended that a non-touch typist raise the feet of the keyboard so they can view the keys more easily. Instead of the traditional touch typing style where you try to hover over the home row at all times, it is actually better if you look at the keyboard when you try to hit a key on the far edges of the keyboard like the delete key. You should keep your wrists in neutral, which means keeping them level without dropping them as you move your whole arm over the keyboard. This is like playing the piano and for those that are very symptomatic and are having a difficult time changing their typing style, some kind of behavioral modification may be helpful since for most of us, changing behavior on our own is difficult. In general, touch typing is beneficial, especially for your neck, since it helps you avoid frequent neck movements, but it is not good if you constantly move your wrist to the side and extend your pinky to hit outlying keys. These micro-movements of the wrist can aggravate the muscles and tendons of your hands and wrist. One behavioral change technique you can do if you tend to rest your wrists heavily on the wrist rest in front of the keyboard is you can remove the wrist rest for five minutes, three times a day, and practice typing with the wrist floating style. 
Be sure to keep your wrists level and not let them drop lower than your hand since this can aggravate both the carpal tunnel area and the forearm muscles of the arms. Another way you can learn to type with a more natural style and not overuse your wrist rests is to position the keyboard trays platform in a negative tilt position. There is research that shows that this can help people maintain more neutral wrist posture. You need to make sure your mouse doesn't slide away from you if you position the keyboard platform in a rather extreme negative tilt, since this can cause extended reaching of your arm. Clipping your mouse cord is one of the ways you can easily avoid this. Sometimes an alternative keyboard is needed, especially for people who are symptomatic and for people for whom the world is not designed for. Standard products are often designed for an average size man. If you have narrow shoulders or broad shoulders, a standard keyboard may not be a good fit. The shorter width keyboards are great for narrow shoulder body types, but if you need to use the 10 key number pad frequently, then this may not be a good choice. Most people who are good at the 10 key number pad do not want to use the numbers at the top of the keyboard because it will slow them down. A low cost alternative for a 10 key pad user is to simply use the mouse with the left arm. This positions it closer to your body because there is no 10 key number pad on the left side of the keyboard and will help you if you are a right handed person to avoid overusing your dominant right arm. Keep in mind that you can always switch back to using the mouse with your right arm during the transitional period or if you get really busy or stressed. Try the 21 days to change behavior technique and give it at least that long before you give up on using the mouse with your left arm. Some people are lucky and are able to learn in just several days, while most people, I would say, it takes a bit longer. For the broad-shouldered person, a split tent type of keyboard can be a better fit. This Kensington Comfort type keyboard is inexpensive and has a pyramid key layout that people usually adapt to easily. The Kinesis Freestyle can be split fully and the Gold Touch keyboard can be split somewhat and tented very substantially. Let's look at the mouse and other alternative pointing devices as well as recommended mousing techniques. Everyone is using the mouse more these days due to the way new software is being designed and the frequent use of web-based programs. Having your hand in a slightly more natural handshake posture can help you work in a more healthy manner. There are now vertical mice that are designed for this handshake posture, but these do take getting used to like the more adjustable keyboards do, and they cost more than a standard mouse. Research has shown that women tend to grip the mouse more intensely than men. This can cause strain on the hand and forearm. Making sure you don't grip it so hard is beneficial. Other mousing technique issues include resting your wrist heavily on a wrist rest while mousing. This is especially an issue for small boned, cold handed individuals. If you prefer to use a wrist rest with a mouse, make sure it is a low height wrist rest and don't rest heavily on it. Another option for wrist support is the use of a movable palm support that moves with the mouse. This is helpful with helping you to keep your wrists in a neutral posture and will help you use your larger arm muscles rather than your hand and forearm muscles. Using the scroll button correctly is also an important technique you should learn. You should try to keep your middle finger in a neutral posture and raise your hand off the mouse, moving your whole arm while using the scroll button. If you think you need a special mouse and or are having symptoms you believe are related to using a standard mouse, you should work with your ergonomic coordinator or your supervisor. You may need an evaluation from an ergonomist who can help you select the most appropriate alternative pointing device. For people with symptoms in their shoulders, a trackball may be helpful, but this too should be carefully selected with the help of your ergonomic coordinator or an ergonomist, especially since trackballs tend to encourage heavy resting and frequent thumb use. Using a wrist rest with a trackball can help you maintain more neutral wrist posture. Two other general techniques I like to recommend are, one, take your hand off the mouse when you are pausing and reading the screen, and two, increase your use of shortcut keys. You can use your help tab on the top of your screen when a specific program is open to search for available keyboard shortcuts, or use Google to search for shortcut keys. Shortcut keys decrease your overall mousing tasks and increase your productivity. 
I recommend you write several shortcut keys down on a post-it note and stick it onto your monitor for several weeks as you learned them. Then refer back to a shortcut key list and write down a few more to learn. We will now review monitors, vision issues, and document holder use. Your eyes lead your posture and having your monitor set at the correct height and appropriate distance from your eyes is very helpful for your neck. In order to establish what height to set your monitor at, you should position yourself at the most comfortable sitting height first, then look at the monitor screen. The first line of type where you look at the screen frequently should be approximately 2 inches below your eye height so that you have a 15 degree angle from your eyes to the first line of type. The main exception to this rule is if you wear bifocal type of lenses and need to view the monitor through the bottom portion of your glasses. With this type of bifocal lens, you may need the monitor to be at the lowest setting possible and you may want to consider progressive lenses or computer glasses. Many monitors are now height adjustable and are easy to adjust. If the monitor is not adjustable, monitor risers can be used to position the monitor at the height needed. Working with documents on the flat work surface can aggravate your neck and a desktop document holder should be used, ideally positioned on your dominant eye side which research has shown is beneficial. If you spend approximately 50% or more of your time reviewing hard copy documents, an inline document holder is especially advantageous. Inline document holders work especially well with a keyboard tray since they are designed to be positioned at the edge of a work surface. An inline document holder can help you maintain neutral neck posture and allow you to glance down without moving your neck substantially. There are slant boards that are designed for handwriting tasks but many are rather large and heavy. So if you have limited space, I recommend that you make your own with a three inch binder and post-it notes taped to the bottom edge so that your documents don't slide off. This is a low cost solution and offers a great small size slant board that you can move easily away. Next, Let's look at the phone and reaching issues and how a neat and well-organized workstation can increase workflow. Shoulder cradling the phone receiver is very hard on the neck and should be avoided at all times. If you get a call, you can set down the phone receiver on paper softly and look items up on your computer and then pick up the phone receiver rather than shoulder cradling it. Headsets are generally recommended if you need to multitask and are on the phone for two hours or more per day. If you have a headset, use it. Keep frequently used items close to you and develop a routine that includes maintaining desk organization. Here are some recommended self-care techniques. For people on the computer eight hours per day, we recommend that you stop every 20 to 30 minutes and do a quick stretch break. In addition, you should try to get up every hour for five minutes and walk around the work area. Don't forget to take micro breaks as well and rest your arms away from the keyboard and mouse, either on your armrests or on your lap. In conclusion, Computers tend to make us forget our bodies, and it takes effort to maintain good working habits. Now that you know what to do, it is time to adjust your own equipment. Move your keyboard and mouse to the correct position and take the time to adjust your chair. Adjust your keyboard tray so that you can work with relaxed shoulders with your elbows positioned close to your body and your wrist level. Practice a light touch style of typing and move your whole arms over the keyboard rather than extending your fingers. Use your mouse with correct technique and good arm and shoulder posture. 
If you need to give your right arm a break or you need the mouse closer to you, use it with your left arm. Stop and stretch regularly and remember you only have two arms for the rest of your life and you want to save your hand units, so be kind to your two hands. Remember, setting up computer workstations with ergonomic principles applied and practicing self-care techniques is win-win for optimal workflow for both the company and all employees.